Hello, my name is Matt Shearsby and I lead the KPMG Crimson Wing Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Operations practice. That's the product formerly known as AX. And for the rest of this session, we'll be calling it just Dynamics for simplicity. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction into the user tools available within the client. I'll we'll start off by looking at dashboards and how this tailors to the individual user's experience. Then I'm going to focus in on the workspaces so you can see how the individual role centers they used to be known surface the right information to you at the right time. I'll take you briefly through the navigations of menus and favorites and how you can adapt these to suit your own personal needs as well. Then I'm going to use search, and I think this is a really powerful feature, one that's new for Dynamics 365 for operations that allows the user to be able to find the menu items they want without needing to know where it's in the menu. Then I'll take you through help. And this is something that's getting us all very excited. The way the task guides are used to enable you to be guided through the individual processes step by step. It's a really powerful tool for user adoption. And finally, we're going to have a look at, little look at mobility and how this gives users access to the information they want, where they need it, on their mobile or on their desktop. So we're going to start off looking at dashboards. Dashboards are where the user lands. So let's look at Aiden first. Aiden's going to log in, and what we'll see here is some of the security capabilities of Dynamics. It directly integrates with Active Directory, and we'll see that Aiden's been challenged to provide information from his mobile device as well. He's been sent a verification code, and we can see on his phone, he's received a message with the verification code in it. He types the verification code, and he can log in. Now, Aiden is an employee of the organization, and his only, only purpose in life in Dynamics is to see his own information. You can see He's only, only given the employee self-service. Now I'm going to look at Sarah. Sarah's a HR manager. She logs in, and her view of the world is a little bit wider than Aiden's. Her security roles and privileges give her access to a wide variety of dashboards in the system. And finally, I'm going to log in myself. Now I am a full administrative access in the system, so I get all of the tiles made available to me. You'll see when I log in that I get a very long list of tiles. Next up, we're going to look at workspaces. So for the purpose of simplicity, I'm going to use my own user, one that has access to all of the workspaces. I'm going to start off by looking at employee self-service. This is all about me. This is all of the information relating to me that's held within the system. We can see we've got a lovely picture of myself. I can see all my work items that are assigned to me. You can see any expenses that are currently in process as well. You can see any review processes. I can see I've got one coming up for my development shortly, and my goals and all my skills information as well. As I said, this is all the information held in the system about me. I can also browse the company directory to find my colleagues, see any open jobs, perhaps I'm looking for a promotion within the organization, and I can also complete questionnaires as I need to as well. Additionally, manager self-service. So as a manager of the organization, I can see a wide variety of information about those that report to me. So here we can see, I can see information about people's jobs, their current positions, what we're currently paying them as well, and how long they've been in service. So see, see we're generally underpaying people fairly significantly. We can see how they're working on their performance goals, and we can also see where they've got upcoming reviews. An interesting fact with this area is that the, for the next upcoming release in spring, we're going to see significant changes to the self-service functionality that allow you to report up and down the organization as well. But from here as well, I can also start the process of recruitment as well. Now we can see here we've got our Power BI tile ready to go. In this instance, we have got it configured, but we'll see later on we will have, and we'll start using that. Now let's look at some of the more functional areas. In this case, personnel management. Here I can see all information relating to the management of the personnel within the organization, such as the total employees, contractors, and open positions. I can easily find a worker. In this case, I'm going to look for Sarah. And I can see all the Sarahs in the organization. I can see those that are about to join the organization as well, those that have recently been hired, those that are currently on leave, and those that we're expecting to leave the organization shortly. I can also see all open positions in the organization. So without having to navigate away from the workspace, I can see the open positions. And here you can see we have a Power BI tile configured. So I can see all of my new hires in the organization. And much like employee self-service, I can see links to other areas. 
Next up, we're going to look at menus. Now, menus are very important to the system, and they are how we traditionally navigate the solution. We can see that within the menus, we can see all of our workspaces. So if I don't want to navigate through the dashboards, I can simply find all the workspaces, and we'll see that I get taken directly to the same workspace that we saw earlier, my employee self-service. But maybe some of the information I need isn't surfaced within the workspaces, something perhaps I don't do every day. Here we can see in the menu, I can find all the information related to general ledger. I can see my workspaces, but also I can see the things that aren't surfaced in the workspaces. Same with HR, we can see the workspaces that are made available, and we can see all the other information that is not available through the workspaces as well. Now, maybe there's something that I want to be able to find easily. In this case, I can just add a little star to it, and it becomes a favorite of mine. This means that every time I log in, it's right at the top of the screen and ready for me to use. We can also see my recent browsing history as well, so we can see the screens that I've opened. Now, the menus are all very interesting, but actually the search is something that's got me a lot more excited. Maybe I know the screen name, but I don't know where it is. So I can just type employee here, and we can see the system straight away telling me the employee self-service. It tells me where it is in the menus, and if I click the link, again, it takes me straight to the picture of me. Um, now, maybe I want another screen, all sales orders. Again, I know what it's called, I don't know where it is. I start the typing, and the system has the intelligence to be able to find this for me. I click the link, and it takes me straight to the sales orders form. Another feature that's got us quite excited with this version of Dynamics is the help functionality. Gone are the days of having to write long and laborious help functions. What we use is task guides instead. So these are simple to make and simple to record and simple to share. In this case, though, I'm going to start off by looking at some wiki articles. Keyboard shortcuts. Again, we can see the intelligence of Dynamics. I can't type very well, and I've typed keyboard shortcuts. It takes me, though, straight to the right link, and the Microsoft Dynamics Help Wiki gives me all the information around the keyboard shortcuts. This, by the way, is a screen that I found very helpful in the past. So every perceivable shortcut is available within this screen. So that's the online help that's directly maintained by Microsoft. So going back to the client now, let's have a look at some task guides. So again, I can search for the useful task guides that I want to find. In this case, I want to create a requisition. Notice that I'm using parentheses to make sure that it finds all of the keywords. It can search in a variety of task guides. We should find a few hits, I would hope, here. And what I want to do is create a requisition for consumption. So I click the link. And the first thing I can see is a list of steps. Now, this is very useful in its own. Maybe I just want a, a short refresher. So I can actually scroll down the steps, and I can see what I should be doing as part of the process for creating a requisition. However, this is only part of the story. It gets a lot better than that. If I click Start Task Guide, I now actually get a helper box. You can see in the top, we go, go to Procurement and Sourcing, Purchase Requisitions. It tells me where I need to go in the system. Go to the right menu and the right menu item, and it opens up. And as it works this out, I should get a little shake of the box, and it takes me to the next step. So it's guiding me through this step by step. It tells me I need to create new. I create new. Now it tells me the next step I need to take as well. So I, so I give my purchase requisition a name. Now, interestingly, in this next step, you'll see there's additional text been added. Now, this text is really important to new users. It's telling them the meaning of the data that they're using. They're not just blindly following it. They're actually understanding why they're doing it. Once I'm happy, I click OK. Give the system a few seconds, and we should now have a purchase requisition. So again, we can see additional information has been added to guide the user through the process. You can think of many reasons why this could be useful. Perhaps we've got a new joiner, and we want to show them a quick process. Or we've, perhaps we've got a process that we only run once or twice a year. Each time, though, I'm getting this information, and the little shake of the box tells me that the system's ready to move on to the next stop. Now, we can see here, this is quite a complicated piece of text. It's actually guided me to the fact that there are two ways, perhaps, that I want to create a line. The first one is to select just the item number. 
Again, further information is given to me. This is just information. You can see that all I have to click here is got it to tell the system. Now I can click the drop down and select my item number. We only have a few products available here. I select my Microsoft Natural Keyboard Elite. And once the system has accepted this, move on to the next step. So now I need to select my quantity. And now we're looking at the second option. So another way that we can add products to the system as well. I think we've seen enough there for the task guides, and I think you can probably agree with me that they're very useful. We've seen high adoption with our customers with these. Now the final piece I want to talk to you about is mobility. And this is a really important subject. With Microsoft Dynamics moving to the cloud, you can see how, how important it is to get good access on mobile devices. This is direct grab from my mobile phone, and you can see the screen is rendered appropriately. So it hasn't just dumped everything onto the screen. We have individual appropriate rendered sections, and it's actually scrolling really nicely. I wouldn't suggest using this for day-to-day -day operations, but if I am on the road and perhaps I want to quickly grab my expense receipts, take a photo of them and upload them to the expense system, this can be really useful. I don't think we'd be using this to maybe enter our general journals. You can see even in these, these large forms, such as the employee list, I can still scroll around successfully and I can get the information I need. But that's not all there is with mobility. We also have good old Power BI. So we've got these Power BI tools. These, these bring the reports together into my Power BI workspace, and I can navigate them in the same way I would in the clients. So you can see here, as I'm scrolling around the pie chart, I can see the relevant information. What I can also do is I can add annotation if I want to. Maybe I want to share an update with someone, and I want to, want to draw on the chart. In this case, I'm being a little bit silly, I know. If I want to highlight certain pieces of information, I can do so as well. On top of this, you also have the burgeoning mobile tools that are becoming available. We've got Power Apps, we've got Azure Apps, and we've also got the Dynamics 365 for Operations mobile platform. There are many different tools that you can use to bring information to your mobile workforce securely and safely.